Isn't that beautiful? That is the sun rising. We're here. Just trying to catch something. Anything. I'll even settle for a pit in the Irish trout. Let's see how we get on today, shall we? Well, it's all go. I've just caught this little jack pike. I haven't even got the bronze out yet. I only just set up the land on that. So let's have a wee look and see with him. It's a bit weird today because I've got some crazy guy that's dropped his dog off down here. And he's away in the he's away in the lock swimming. Oh, right. right, let's get this. Let's get this. And he's tangled himself up on the net. He isn't. <laughs> oh, come on, you. Behave. See how I can get you unhooked. Yeah. He's not a very big one. He's not a very, very big. We should take a wee photograph of it here. <laughs> I honestly cannot. You are the. You have to be kind of crazy. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's the best way to start the day. Gee, I start with a cup of coffee. Here, do you want a, do you want a picture now? With no, it's okay, buddy. Sure? It's all right. I'm just going to put him back in now. <laughs> he's had my... He's had a little... What's it called? A, a pollen? Oh, what was that? That was the dog. The dog. <laughs> oh, the dog done some looking at it in that. That's <laughs> it, did all right. I was wondering what the fuck is that thing? And there. It's a very sweet beast, isn't it? I think that they're beautiful. They're I think they are. The way they're markings, the way they dissolve yeah, into the background, yeah. beautiful. That's today's a success already. Very good. <laughs> very good indeed. It's a, it's a weird one. Pike? Still, uh, I heard you're sort of the predominant thing. That's, that's, that's part of the lock earned. It'll be brown trout and pike are the two apex predators. No. They'll eat everything else. They'll eat the roach, the bream, the, the smaller perch, the dead, the dying. But it's mostly pike and, pike and trout in this part of the water. Yeah. Who would you get when you trout? So? Hello. Yeah. You, do, you, get, you get quite a few trout. I mean, I had trout the last time I fished here. Very good. That's good to hear. I've sort of heard that uh, trout were hard enough to get these days here. Well, that's a, I hear that as well myself. But when you see the people who are fishing for them, you kind of understand why. <laughs> there'd, be a, there'd be a few of them that would do more drinking than fishing. And there's even there's a there's another there's another load of them that would do more uh, more talking about fishing in the bars than actual fishing. You know, they're all they're great experts, but they don't you don't actually ever see them actually fishing. That water's fucking cold. That is Baltic, and I only put my hands on it. <laughs> Cup of coffee on the go. One pike so far. New bit of kit to go through. Especially a new bag that I'm storing all my, my stuff like my floats and my sunk float rigs and you know. Basically it's a bits bag.
I'll do a rundown of my backpack later on. I've been asked to do a rundown of what is in my backpack. So I'll do that. But I'm going to have a cup of coffee first. Got this umbrella up. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen. As a pike angler, we all have those little jobs that we have to do. That we keep putting off and keep putting off and keep putting off because we don't like doing them but we know in our heads we have to do them well since I've got some free time now I'm gonna do these little piddly jobs I'm taking apart old trisses old clips old tresses and I am um, scrapping what can be scrapped and saving what can be saved an old tress bin here this is where I throw all the sharps in ends of tresses will wreck you so let's just not have them plicked onto the ground or plinked onto the ground these traces might look short, but these are for fishing with an up trace. So I'm just going through and changing clips and putting on decent strong ones. These Gemini clips are brilliant. They're made for sea fishing. Dead strong, won't break out, won't bend out. Really, really good. I'm just cutting this truss down to size to make it the right sort of size it's a bit nippy today the hands that I had in the water to release that pike it kind of made me think that fella that was in swimming clearly has to be mental Fair play to him. That's what he does in the morning to get himself awake, he says. So fair play to him. That's the way he lives. And I'm not going to criticise him. I should have took a crimp out of it. Clip out of it even. One of my friends was talking a lot about men going their own way it's called MGTOW MGTOW movement it's like a men's rights group so men's rights what is it? I've done a bit of looking into it watched a couple of YouTube videos and asked myself a couple of questions you know we've got we as a species, us, us men, we don't really do ourselves many favours, do we? We neglect our health. We we definitely neglect our mental health. But men's rights, men's rights. A lot of the men's rights guys that I looked at, they seem to be very anti-woman, and I don't get that. Yes, there are bad women, just as there are bad men. You know, I get that, I understand that. You know, nobody is perfect, 
you know, we've all got kind of light and dark, to quote a very good friend of mine. But the men's rights guys seem to be very much that they don't like women, uh, blame women for a lot of the things that's wrong with them. You know, of course the women will say, well, this is this is typical men. They'll have the uh, what's called the Peter Pan syndrome, where they don't want to grow up, or something along those lines. And I can look at these people and think, you know, well, actually, no, it's nothing to do with that. I mean, I can understand why some men would be sceptical. I mean, why, why would a man enter into a legal contract, which is what a marriage is, uh, to possibly end up losing everything you ha everything you own because you picked the wrong person, you married the wrong woman, so to speak. So why would men enter into a contract where you're going to lose half your stuff? I can understand that thinking. I mean, I've been with women that are. When I look back, I, I look back, and if I could go back in time, I'd honestly go back in time and punch myself. Ask myself, you know, what the fucking hell are you doing? I went out with a woman once, and I allowed her to make me miserable. I went, I'm not going to name this woman, she knows who she is, and if there is a thing, if karma is a thing, then one day she'll have a, have her comeuppance. I look back at that relationship and I wonder, you know, why did I, why did I allow myself to be put into that position? And it's one of those things where, you know, I can be angry at her, yes, but ultimately, I can live the rest of my life. And have a good life or I can stay at up with anger and let it beat me and I didn't let it beat me I'm gonna be very honest with you I have a fucking awesome wife I mean she is amazing she is absolutely amazing Without doubt, she is one of the most. She is one of the human beings that, in this world, without shadow of doubt, I trust. I trust her with my life. I trust her with everything. She is. She is. My rock. And I know that sounds fucking pathetic. You know, when you're gonna have people saying, "Oh, you know, get fucking weak, get a grip," all that sort of shit. Though. No. When I met my wife, something in my head went, this is the one. You know, we all talk about the one, you know, the one woman that we all want to be married to and blah, blah, blah. And this was definitely the one. We went out, dated, got engaged, got married, and I've not looked back. I've not looked back, not even a little bit. Sure, we have our, our arguments when every couple has their arguments. And yes, I'm an arsehole to live with. I know I'm an arsehole to live with. I know I'm an absolute dick to live with. You know, I have that many fucking issues. It's it's amazing me to this day that, that people, you know, stick around. So, the big two thing, whilst I can understand it, I can't really agree with it. I can understand, I can see some of their aims, I mean, I can see some of the reasons why they would be want campaigning for men's health. You know, we're more likely to die in a workplace accident, we're more likely to die a violent death, we're less likely to live as long as a woman, uh, more likely to get a harsher prison sentence, more likely to be homeless. Uh, you know, less likely at all to be to be awarded any sort of favourable divorce, you know, uh, 
setting, especially if there's kids involved, kids always go to the woman. And I'll tell you a story about that there in a minute. You know, kids always go to the woman. The woman is always believed, even if the woman's human garbage. When I was at Old Grove, there was a very good friend of mine. He was in the army. Old Grove was a mixed base. There was army and air force there. He was, he was alright. I played rugby with him. He was a good guy. You know, he was fun to be around. Good guy to talk to, have a laugh with. And he had three daughters. And his daughters were a real credit to him. You know, polite, well-mannered, good kids. One day, he came home and he found his wife giving out the free goods to some random guy. That was it. He kicked her out. The daughters were old enough to realise, you know, like they're all at an age where they were understanding. The daughters didn't agree with what the mother did. The daughters blamed their mother an awful lot for wrecking the family. And the daughters stayed with the father, lived with the father. Lived with the father on a military base in a married quarter. This woman went to the CSA, the Child Support Agency, and said that her, her nasty bad husband had kicked her out of the house and she is living by herself, trying to raise three kids. And the way the CSA worked, or worked at that time was, they went to the MOD and said, Soldier A isn't paying for his kids, dock his wages. The wages are docked, just like that. That man was put in so much financial debt, it took fucking months to get this sorted out. To the point where the station commander was writing to the CSA on this guy's behalf saying this human being is one of my guys, he lives on my base in this married quarter and he raises his three kids and the CSA turned in and says to the uh, the figure of authority of the on the station, the station commander basically said to him uh, you could be one of his mates that's lying for him. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. You know, because station commanders, the man that's in charge of, you know, millions of pounds of military assets, you know, they're obviously dis not trustworthy. Took months to get sorted out. Eventually, the money... Let me just check this. Nope, still on. The money stopped coming out of his account. Result, recovering the money, because obviously there was months and months and months of money that was taken away. Recovering the money, the basically the, the CSA told him, forget about it, write it off. Write it off. So for months this guy was living, you know, with the generosity of the people around him. No, that's the wind. Yeah, the wind's picking up a little bit. For months and months this guy lived off the generosity of others and the CSA basically said to him, write it off, let it go. He asked, could he go through a civil court? His solicitor told him, yes you could. You can go through a civil court, but you'll never get the money back. And he goes, why? He goes, well you'll have to send bailiffs around and all she'll do is she'll just go bankrupt. Let me go and check this rod. Getting little tap tap taps on this road. This road with the white alarms is just literally flicked. In there, about 10 yards, wouldn't even be 10 yards, maybe even 5 yards. This is the deep trench that they've cut through for the boats. That's a submerged rocky outcrop that's been marked off. On this road, I have an eel tail. On this rod I have a brown trout. On the 
big rods. I have a bluey. I have a pollen. It was this rod that went earlier on. It took a pollen, so just whacked another pollen on it. Fishing with my maximum of four rods today. Not come to play, so to speak. I wish it was a bit calmer. I'd have got the bait boat out and put these two rods about 80 yards out into the deeper trench. There's a deeper cut between that marker post and the island, it goes right down. But the bank just goes kind of like that there, there's no real drop offs. But let's see. We've had crazy people swimming. Really, uh, rude people coming down with their dogs and letting them throwing sto throwing balls in the water for the dogs to chase. We've had two pike. <laughs> this has been a bad morning so far. May even have a cup of coffee number two. A few moments later. Well. That is number three pike of the day. It shook off. It was about the same size as the first one, so I'm happy I didn't have to get it in the net. So they're definitely feeding. I'm putting it down to this sharp shock. The uh, the winter has definitely started. I'm going to cast out a nice whole mackerel here. If I can get. Standard running ledger. Standard running ledger. Right. Just make sure that there's nobody behind me. Using my this is it on the bottom. These are my 13 foot four pound test rods because I'm fancy to change. The bait blasters are awesome rods, but these could be doing by getting out, so let's get them out. That's three fish today. That's pretty good. Having a good day. Oh, I have to put 
put the gloves on because Baltic! Inject that smelt with oil. Turn this off, close this down. These are the bit blaster rods. Let's get them, let's get it back out again. Not a big truck. There we go. Smack in the middle of that reef. That's where we want it to be. Three fish, or rather two fish landed. One fish shook off at the net. I don't mind, it was a small jack. It was tiny, so. I'm happy that I didn't have to mess about with it in the net. Oh. Time for a cup of coffee number two. It's been a weird day. In here, because I'm just kind of sheltered up behind the van. It's okay, but out in the dirt in the jetty. Poof. Bugger me. It is cold. It is cold. It's even that cold if having to put the gloves on. Cooking episodes with scopes will be on now in a minute when I get this cup of coffee sorted out. Gonna have a nice old faithful bacon sandwich on some brioche buns oh, it's gonna be good it's gonna be good I just need to put some more fuel into my stove because it's running on ether at the minute decent bacon and some nice rolls to go with it Cooking with scoops! <laughs> right. Fold the bacon in half so you can get six. Oh, we've got three each then. I fold it in half, that way you're putting the straggly bit with all the fat underneath it. Therefore, hopefully, you're getting the fat cooked kind of quickly so it goes nice and crispy. Because everyone wants crispy bacon. All right. Everybody loves crispy bacon. And if you don't love crispy bacon, then something's wrong with you.
a little tickle on my uh, whole mackerel. Bacon sandwich, cups of coffee. So we just spend the day. No. Oh, simple food, food of the gods. I'm gonna inject some oil into the, one of the bits here. I've got some new stuff to try. It's from the Holy Mackerel Company. This is, this is for pike, carp, zander and catfish. And it's got some red dye through it that's supposed to simulate blood. Inject into dead bait, or used to saturate an oil sponge. Soak baits, add to ground baits, boilies, particles, shake well before use. Not fit for human consumption. I'm a great believer that we take away these labels and let humanity thin itself out a wee bit. So let's give it a go. I've got, I've got just over 10 moles of this injected in here. And I've got a whole mackerel that should have thought should have thawed out by now. So let me just turn this off. And let me get it wound on. Had a good day today. Three fish. Okay, they're being tiny, but Three fish is three fish. And there's the snag leader. Let me just get this put on the spool properly. With the snag leader, I always like to have the knot put at the very, very top of the spool like that there. The snag leader is 50 pound. Uh, Christen silver or silver, or Christen quicksilver or something like that. It's basically it's a, it's a strong, heavy duty braid. It's a heavy duty braid so that you're able to fish areas that's really snaggy. Now that my hands are in a, an absolute state. Let's get this cast out. Hammer on the bottom. Let's get the rod set up in the rod alarm. I'm definitely smelling mackerel. Let's see what that does for the show, eh? Top tip time. Baby wipes. Baby wipes are awesome. I always keep baby wipes in the van. 
Not because I have a baby I need to wipe, but because baby wipes are awesome to take away the the mess. That takes away all that oil off of my my hands, and it means I'm not smelling fish oil every time I go to take a a cup of coffee. So yeah, baby wipes. You can buy them for a pound, dirt cheap, and they have a multitude of uses. Not just if you've ever been out fishing and you found yourself needing to drop bombs. Awesome. Just remember that you have to throw them in the bin when you're done. I can just keep a little bag with me that all the litter goes in. All the rubbish goes in and it gets chucked in the bin when I go home. Oh. Three fish in the one day, that's got to be some sort of record for this channel. <laughs> Just had to change the battery out there. Thankfully, I have spares. Right, eel tail, smelt, whole mackerel and pollen. Let's get a cup of tea. Gear review of the Fox Camo Light backpack. I got this a couple of years ago now because I used to have a, like a, a fishing rucksack that was it held like a hundred and twenty litres of stuff and as you do when you've got a hundred and twenty litres of space you try and cram a hundred and twenty litres of stuff on it doesn't really do well for you when you've got like uh, wrecked vertebrae in your spine so I deliberately downsized I got myself one of these which was half the size it's got clips here at the front that if I was going walking somewhere, I could clip my leg, my bed, my chair to that bit, or a, or an unhooking mat, or you know whatever. But I would clip my my chair to that. This clips in, pulls down. It's got a big long pocket. I use this for my unhooking tools and longer items. You know, it, it zips right the way down the side of the of the the pocket. So you can get right the way down. I think it's designed for the carp guys to put their uh, bobbins or their sexy bank sticks in. That's a big long pot, big long pocket. On the other side, there's two smaller pockets. The top one, I have. Uh, some chemical lights on hook on crimping pliers, spare mono, spare wires, bits and pieces. On the bottom, I have screw hooks and I have my PVA stuff in here and some snag leader. So that's the outside. What do I have on the inside? Well, 
this bit here is hardened so you're meant, you're meant to actually just kind of throw it down like that in the ground and then kick it under your bed chair these clips can clip off and you can you know have your bag out of the way inside you have a big pocket for your for your tackle box that holds all my individual bits and pieces and then everything else is modular and this is what I like about it I've got one of these Shimano tribal pouches that's again modular for my scales these are all hardened I've got one for my floats see oodles of floaty goodness in there the next one I have my pouch for my oils and my needles for injecting baits and dyes to flavour or dyes to spray colours and stuff like that this is just one of these plastic pouches and then I have my bits bag my bits bag this is new so on one side it's got all my floats my pop-ups on the other side it's got loads of different rigs and stuff in there and there we have it that's what that's all I carry and it weighs next to nothing because I'm not carrying a ton of stuff you know there's there's these little flaps that obviously kind of come out and you can do flappy things with them same with this they're meant to kind of stick there if you wanted to stick to them and there's like little receiving grooves for them but I never really use them I just bung everything in there so there we have it my fishing backpack it doesn't weigh an awful lot it's easy enough to move and it's you know and let's face it if I'm having to go anywhere that's like a longer distance I'm throwing it onto the barrow and the barrow's pushing it but because it's got the flat bottom you can kick it under your bed chair and get it out of the way that's actually pretty good from Fox the zips have stood up to it the only bit of damage that has happened so far is it's begun to part from in here so that's the only bit of uh, negativity I have regarding it I can't remember much it RRP'd for but there we go, the fox rucksack thingy. Two hours later. Sun's just set. Had a fourth run. No good, pulled the hooks out. I felt it go over a ledge because all you could feel was it. So I've had to Where's it gone? I've had to put a load of... I've had to get rid of a load of mono. The mono was just shredded. Absolutely shredded. Zebra mussels, baby. Thankfully, I got everything back. Got the end tackle back. Lost the lead. But got the trace back. The hooks, well, one of them was, one of them, I guess they're alright, they're both alright, but this is the importance of checking your reels. I'm going to go back to the house probably next week when I get five minutes and I'm going to have to re-spool that reel, put new model on it. Just because I don't trust what's on the spool. Not that I don't trust it, it's uh, 
when you feel your your mono very obviously gritting against something, and then you you cast out, and you're pulling it back, and you feel like the wheel nicks on your fingers, little rough bits. And you look at it, and it's very obvious that the zebra mussels have had a go. So you you know that it's just that's that. Mono's day has done, has been done. I'm going to fish for another hour until the dusk has well truly settled in. Give it an hour, it's calmed down an awful lot. just sitting here at night time or at the end of the evening shall we say not at night time yet the moon's just over there the sun has not long set over there so we just have to chill out for a wee bit nothing big today two small pike in the unhooking mat Another small one shook off at the net, and I have no idea what the fourth one was. I have no idea. I didn't. I could feel the the tap, and then I just felt the the, the like the ripping of it going over over the ledge. So this is why we use strong gear. This is why we use, you know. 40 millimeter monofilaments, so this is why we use 50 pound braids. You, you want something that's going to be able to stand up to the zebra mussels here because they are brittle, absolutely brittle. There is no way around it, they are absolutely brittle. But it's been a good day, I've enjoyed myself. Met a crazy person that took, took, went for a swim. Met a prick of a dog walker who thought it would be funny to throw stuff in for the dog to go and swim. Her words were, the lock is big enough for my dog to swim in. I'm then going, yes, the log, lock is big enough. The lock is huge. And there are 25 other car parks that's got equal access to this that you could have went to. But you've come down to where I'm fishing to chuck a ball in where I'm fishing. And then when her dog went behind the table and took a big shit, she was in the car and away before she could pick up after the dog. So, she's not really doing herself any favours, is she? Hmm. But, not going to argue, it's been a really enjoyable day. If I don't speak to you guys again, then nothing else has been caught or nothing else of interest has happened. If I do speak to you again, then hopefully I'm holding the holding a, a nice, big, healthy pike this big. <sighs> It'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be really nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like watching these videos, don't be scared. Share them on your social medias. Give them a wee thumbs up. Give them a wee, a wee uh, comment. I do try to answer all the comments, but yeah, it's been a good day, so on to the next one, eh?